The 2019 Rebels are full of new faces. With that change comes new challenges, like the first road trip, or the first hit, or the first time competing on the big stage. For this team, the opportunity to prove itself is too good to pass up. Los Angeles is a city where dreams are made. It's also where the 2019 Ole Miss Rebels are looking to make a name for themselves. The only problem is one of their toughest opponents yet is standing in their way, the flu. Well, it's day one out here in California. Got up at two o'clock. Um, so far we're down eight people. have thrown up, have a fever, got the flu. You're rooming with someone if you're sick or not sick. So basically like, you know, half of us are like quarantined and the other half is just Sickness is everywhere, you gotta be prepared. All the pitchers are wearing their like face masks out here. Perks of being in the outfield by ourselves. Could breathe fresh air finally. I do feel a little like nauseous, but it might have been from breathing in a face mask all day long. Probably, you just ate too. Yeah. Oh, four for four. My, my. You had a breath already? No. Never. My mic! We're just down a, a bit. Down a bit? Yeah, aren't we like supposed to have like eight outfielders? My mic! Oh! Replace the divot! That's a big one. My gosh, this is huge. Game winner, so we make a good throw, we win. And we won. We lost. Dang it. My name's Kylan Becker, and I'm the outfield diva. No shame. Told ya. No shame. She has no shame. She's the outfield diva. Even though diva may be a word that Kylan Becker may agree with, for those that know her, there isn't just one word that describes her. She has a quiet confidence about her. She's fun-loving, um, but she's all about business. When she steps between the lines, it's about business. Bubbly, um, fun, but yeah, she can be quiet. When I first met her, she was pretty shy, but as I've gotten to know her, she's opened up a lot, and she's hilarious, like I love her. Kylan has a lot of grit. Like, she may say that she's a diva, you know, she may be like, she likes her things her way, you know, she has everything, like, her warm up and everything like her way, but she really goes out there and gets after it. Gets a hold of that one. And that one is a home run. A slap shot over the center field fence to get Ole Miss on the board. Hard hit ball to second to throw home. Not in time. Gracie Majum will score. Kylan Becker does the job. A lot of times, and not a ton of RBIs. Oh my, that hits the chuck. This is going to be an RBI. Maybe an inside the park homer. Look at Cox fly. Becker's on her heels. Becker's going to do it. And inside the park homer. She's a laid back individual um, that loves this game. She loves her teammates. She really loves her family. Her personality is exactly what we want all our athletes to be like and just give us that old Miss culture here. When I committed to this school, um, I was committing to Coach Smith and he hadn't even coached here yet, so it was kind of just on his word of what he would turn, of how he would turn this program around. Us doing that kind of helped create the culture that we have now because everyone else that comes in kind of just follows on our lead. Although Kylan Becker will no doubt go down as one of the best players in program history, she didn't always love the sport of softball. My dad forced me to go play softball. I did not want to play. I actually cried. The I think I was supposed to do an, a tryout one time, and he bought me all my gloves and cleats and everything, and I threw a tantrum and said I did not want to go, so my mom convinced him to let me not, and he told me that I better go to the next tryout, so I think the next year I had to go, and um, the rest is history now. That's the only sport I play. <laughs> With softball not on her mind at a young age, she would succeed in gymnastics earning two national titles in 2002 and 2003. 
When I was little, so the 18 months, um, that was like mommy and me classes, so when your mom holds your hand as you walk over the balance beam and all that, whatever. And I ended up just really liking it, so my parents kept me in it. And um, gymnastics is one of those sports that you get like really serious in at a young age because you're better when you're younger. It was like my entire life. I would be there from like four in the afternoon till nine at night as a little girl. Did you know that she was a two-time national champion in gymnastics? What? <laughs> that doesn't sound real. That's incredible. I didn't know that. I did not. Really? Yes. I can see it. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. I did know that, and uh, she's just a pure athlete, so that doesn't surprise me that she was a top gymnast. I definitely was all about gymnastics. Um, I actually got like a mental block. I would have to go see sports psychologists and stuff for it. It's just one of those things where, for some reason, you just can't go backwards. Don't know why, but if a coach was there to spot me, even if she wasn't actually doing anything, I just needed like that knowing somebody was there and I could do it. So it was really frustrating, so I think that's why my parents kind of like weeded me out and would be like, hey, let's go soccer twice a week, and then gymnastics the rest of the week, and then it was like soccer and softball, and then eventually it was just softball, and um, yeah, so I mean, like, playing softball was not the original plan, but it's what worked out. Not only did it work out for Becker, her continued progress in the sport led her to being selected to the United States national team to compete for Team USA at the Japan All-Star Series in Tokyo. That actually wasn't a goal of mine. I kind of one of those things where you kind of think it's too far out of reach that you just don't really plan on it. It was Coach Smith that was like, hey, I really think you need to go to this tryout. And I was kind of just like, all right, I mean, you want me to, I'll go. We've had a couple of conversations about what that experience was like, and she's been able to let our players know um, what it was like. And so it's just special for the program to have. She's passing along um, everything that she's gone through, everything she did through that. Well, I think it's just a great opportunity for Everyone on the team here, we can learn from her. And even just watching what she does, she's just a great role model all around. I mean, we all look up to some of the girls that I got to play with. So some of them are like, hey, what did you learn from? Well, for example, like Natasha Watley was my coach. And I remember looking up to her when I was little because she's a slapper. And it's like, I got to take some notes from her. And I think that's something that some of the other slappers are like, hey, well, what did she tell you? She's a role model. She's an ambassador, not only for the university, but for the game of softball. Um, and just for family, and I'm proud to be able to call her a coach and a friend. Not many have been able to accomplish as much as Kylan Becker has in four years. Perhaps the greatest of those accomplishments came in 2017, when the Rebels won the SEC tournament. We've been preseason ranked like last every year, and now we're number one, so go Rebs! <laughs> Kylan's one of those kids that I don't think will ever be forgotten in our program. Um, you know, she's kind of that mainstay kid that she's been in the starting lineup pretty much when she came in as a freshman. Kylan is the type of person you want to be. She's the player you want to be, just her attitude, her effort. When I think of like our roots and our culture and things like that, I really think of Kylan and the things she does for us. I think it's really special being here for the first at Ole Miss because I think that we kind of appreciate it a little bit more. It's, you know, um, it's always like the first one's always the biggest. So I think that being able to be a part of the first, I think makes it all more special. So this is the, the flu epidemic of 2019 with Ole Miss softball. And so we are making sure nobody else gets it in the entire Inland Empire, basically. Flu crew. Don't get too close. <laughs> Why did we, we have so much <laughs> <laughs> We have so many things. Yeah. Adam, you need to clean your cleats before the Long game still. You're a little dirty. Not, not up to standard. We're gonna look good. We're gonna smell, smell good. Who's that team coming in? That's Ole Miss. I just found a towel that Molly stole from the training room. I don't know how long ago. It's on the towel. Shout out. It's always the pitcher. Oh, it's. My bag has never been this clean. Yeah. My bag. You need to wash that towel that's in there. Oh no! You need to return that towel. I forgot. 
<laughs> on behalf of the cleaning crew of the flu yes. epidemic of 2019, 19. we advise the children, get slick or get, get sick. sick. Get sick. We're out. <laughs>
Getting that game, that first game against uh, Loyola Marymount rained out, it could have been a blessing in disguise even though we wanted to play just because it gave us another day to get healthy. We all got to kind of relax, you know, take a second to heal ourselves and, you know, get back into the mind things. But um, the girls that did get sick bounced back so hard and so tough and by game time you had no idea that they were sick at all. It was finally time to play. Although the Rebs were raring to go, the UC Riverside Highlanders were looking to make a statement to the Rebs early on. The Rebs would be able to hold the Highlanders to only two runs, but head coach Mike Smith wanted to make sure the team kept its focus. Come on now, let's swing the bats, let's get ourselves back in this ball game, all right? Settle down, relax, settle down, relax, play our game. There's, we have seven at bats, let's go, come on. Hey, we Any time a team jumps out on you, they throw the first punch. You know, the key is throwing that, that next punch back. Uh, if they knock you down on the mat, you get yourself back up and you go. And, um, you know, Kylan came in, led us off with that triple and really kind of just threw that punch and got us going. And I think that really settled us down a little bit, maybe took a little bit of pressure off. I definitely think it gives the team some confidence that we can score a lot of runs on this team and that as long as we hold them to two, that we can still win. With Kylan safely at third base, Kaylee Horton would waste little time sending her home and putting the Rebels on the board. In the second inning, Jesse Puck would tie it with a big shot out to left field. Get out of here! That, that a girl, good job! Honestly, that at bat, when I hit it, I literally think I took off running to second because I was like, did this actually happen? Did I actually hit that? It was just kind of a, a sign of relief that trust in my swing, trust in what I've done over the past year and a half or so to build up to this point. Jessica has worked extremely hard um, over the off season, um, over the fall and into the spring. And so her being able to see her swing the bat like that um, was a huge part of just kind of validating herself and the time, the work that she's put in, and, and I was really happy to see that ball leave the yard for us as a team, but well as for her. From there, Riverside would take the lead once more in the third inning, but it would be all Rebels from there, adding nine runs in the remaining innings, including two bombs. Get out of here! That a girl. Good job, Finn. Well, I think Brittany attacked the zone a little bit. You know, after that shaky first, I think that was the important piece. Is you know the Kylan, the Kylan Becker triple, um, the home runs, um, and then just that off it offensive explosion I think really settled everybody down and kind of got us on you know what Ole Miss softball is about. Yes! Good job Sid. Hey just enough good job. Good luck good luck good luck the rest of the year good luck the rest of the year yeah. But they never want to leave excess in the <laughs> in good spirits after winning the first half of a doubleheader, the Rebs would now turn their attention to Cal Poly. Cal Poly would respond in the next inning with two runs of their own, 
for Coach Smith, there was no need for Pat. You know, it was the first inning we were down, so we had a lot of at-bats left. Um, in the end, if we can come through this and play our good softball, we have a good, good chance to win. Allowing only three hits and zero runs the rest of the way, the combined pitching efforts of Ava Tillman and Molly Jacobson would put the Rebels in a great position to take control of the game. Between the two of them, they did a really good job of keeping the game close and giving our offense an opportunity to put up more runs than they had and give ourselves the chance to win the ball game. And um, I'm just proud of what our pitching staff um, was able to do in that game. Okay, well, you guys can oh. He needs some Pilot. sugar water. <laughs> oh, he's moving! Oh my god! Oh my god, he's moving! Go ahead! I told you he's just tired. <laughs> Bye, buddy! Did we name him? With Mother Nature taken care of, the Rebels would hope to be less kind to the Beavers of Oregon State. Um, they knew that it was a power five and it was a, you know, a pretty good opportunity for us to kind of uh, gain some momentum going into, um, you know, the UCLA game. It was a good opportunity for us to play well and go out there and show them what we got, um, like our big first game out there. She's got power, power, power in the hour. Why do you got to be looking at me, man? It's cameras. Because we're in Hollywood? Is that why? Okay. I guess I'll be a movie star for one day. Short-lived. Let's go, Molly. Yep. Ready? Yep. Born ready. I like it. Good idea. <laughs> Woo! We're ready to play ball. Ground crew. Come back here. Go back. Hurry up! Come on! Get down, 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 down! Becker, ponte el alba, slow and fry, key. Oh. Good, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! Right here, right here. Good. Higher, slow and fry, you gotta score. Got it? What's the pass ball? Go, 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 go! Our offensive philosophy is we want to throw the per first punch, and I think we were able to do that. Um, and by doing that, it puts a little bit more pressure on them. Remember, we're never going to be non-aggressive to the strike zone. Never, ever, ever, ever. Okay? She throws your strike first pitch. You got to attack it. Does that make sense? Two strikes. We're looking to hit the ball away. Don't cover too far off the plate. That ball you're swinging at, they're way inside. Like, get hit by it, but don't swing at it. That makes sense. Be aggressive in the zone. <laughs> down, 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 down. Nope. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! We gotta score, we gotta get dirty, 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 dirty! Got her! Alright, let's go! With the lead in their grasp, the left arm of Molly Jacobson flooded the Beaver lineup, throwing seven strikeouts and allowing only five hits. I think a lot of things were working. Um, I felt like I was throwing pretty hard. Defense behind me was solid, and then our bats really came alive. Um, Molly did an unbelievable job in that game, and um, again, another keeping the game close, um, but our offense did enough. Good, ring her up! Hit it, baby! 
good way against Pac-12 school. Okay, now let's freaking get another one tonight. Okay, this is what it's about. We're playing the number one team in the country. Okay, play the game. No pressure. We just go out and play. Have fun, right? We've been having fun all year long. All right, we've had fun this entire weekend. Let's go. No one's expect. No one's expecting us to win this game. Let's freaking shock the world tonight. All right, let's shock the world. All right, let's go. Reds on three. One, two, three. Reds. Brittany Finney would take the circle for Ole Miss. Two years ago, in a losing effort, she pitched a complete game, allowing only one run on four hits. The now senior pitcher knew what to expect going in. Going in, thinking, you know, knowing I was going to pitch that game, I really kind of, my mind honestly kind of kept flashing back to the game before that we played at Supers, and you know, I thought, you know, there was a couple things I wish I would have done, you know, things like that, and I knew I was going to be pitching against one of the best lineups in the country, and so I really just tried to warm up, get my head on right, and make sure I had everything ready to go. Throughout the first couple of innings, the Rebel defense would hold strong. Come on, Finn. Come on, Finn. Nice. She looks good. Good job. Yes. Nice spot. Nice spot, Finn. Good job, Finny. So we're in the nine hole, so you've seen them all. That's okay. what they got. Okay, nice, nice job. Yeah. Opportunities would not be scarce in this contest for the Rebels. In the top of the third, Ali Mena would put herself into scoring position with a leadoff triple. But as quickly as the opportunities came, they would just as quickly go away. I thought we didn't run the bases real well in that situation. It kind of caught us off guard a little bit. I think she was going back instead of staying where she was and had an opportunity to go. I think she left a little bit too late um, for making that attempt to go to the go to the plate. But um, again, you know, young team. Sometimes you make mistakes early. Sometimes games like that, you're really going to win with one or two runs. So you really just need to make sure that when you do get those runners in scoring position, that you execute in that time because it might not happen again. UCLA would act fast cashing in on an RBI base hit in the third, and another in the fifth inning. Being unable to cash in on early opportunities put the Rebels in a hole they would not be able to come back from, losing 4-0 to zero to the Bruins. Yeah, we had our opportunities, um, and we kind of squandered those away a little bit. You know, we didn't capitalize. Um, but that's what good teams do. Good teams do, they, they capitalize on your mistakes. Um, and we just have to do a better job of making sure that we don't make those mistakes for teams to capitalize on. Some opportunities, you know, got away from us a little bit, but I think that was definitely the biggest learning experience for us. You know, they're a great team, you know, a top team that's definitely going to end up, you know, in the top eight. And, you know, going up against them early in the season really was honestly to our benefit because it gives us the opportunity to learn and to say, okay, here's what we did against them. Here's what we can do against everybody else to make sure that the outcome is in our favor next time. But I was happy with the way we played in that game. Um, wasn't a game that we're gonna hold our heads down and say, hey, we didn't come out and compete because we competed from start to finish. Um, I think we just, we didn't take care of the ball in certain situations and kind of let that game kind of separate a little bit. I think that's something that we're really working on now is just making sure that we protect the ball because you know, we're a good team and we should be winning all these games and it's just a matter of protecting the ball and not beating ourselves. The game against UCLA, the Oregon State games, even the game against Boise State, I think really just gave us that opportunity to play those close ball games, to get ourselves and put ourselves in a little bit of a, a bind, um, give us a little bit of adversity and a way for us to fight out of it. And that's what young teams need to learn um, so we can mature ourselves to become a um, better ball club. Welcome back to my crib. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to our crib. Take this off. Oh, goodness. I would fail the one minute test. It's going to take, take me about 15 minutes to get this. See, all our cars, those are all ours. Also, all of ours. All of ours. All those cars? That's my big deal. Yeah, that's my fire truck. That one in there is hers. That was mine. Obviously, we know who's better. Drive these like on a casual day, 
but I mean, typically like on weekends we'll get in the big one, you know. I keep my Ferrari in the garage. I don't like to take it out. There. We don't want to like make people feel bad, you know. So we just kind of hide it. Just hide. I'm running to the fire. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to save anybody. This is where I like to take out my anger. You know, sometimes I just take a step. I literally told you. Just go at it. I literally said, this is what happens when we let you drive. <laughs> and this is why she lost her driving privileges. That's but not true. You didn't it's a lie. Don't believe it. Apparently that's kind of me. Safety first. I can take y'all on this fire truck tour through the city. It's super fun, super fresh. And uh, have a great night. Hotty Tommy.